Good morning, folks. Still here in Florida. I have not put the ultralight back together yet since I left the AirTech, but hopefully here in the next few days or so, I'll get it put back together and get up in the air. I just want to let you know that a lot of the footage that you're going to see is mostly just information, not really flying stuff, but I really appreciate uh, Kenneth helping me with the ultralight. I did not go down there uh, thinking that I'm going to pull it out and they're going to help me with the whole thing. I just wanted them to look at it, but they're so kind that they were willing to help me with working on it and telling me things to do on it. So really appreciate that, Kenneth. Um, we're going to get right into this footage, a lot of footage to go through. So hope you guys enjoy it. If you haven't already done so, hit the subscribe button and uh, also check out ultralightairplanedriver.com. I have an apparel line there. I restructured the whole pricing on it, just making a few bucks here and there on the apparel. So go check that out. Thanks guys for the ones that I've already ordered. If you haven't already seen, I sent you guys emails with big coupon codes that you guys can use uh, on your next order. So already, let's just get right into it. Like I said, I was just gonna have Beaver or whoever wants to look at it, look at it and what your opinions are on it. Um, I mean, it's just nuts and bolts. Yeah. When's the last time you punched that this, uh, forever? I've never. I've had the plane for not quite two years. Okay. I pushed on it pretty good at the seams, but what what should it do? Like, or when should it? If, I mean, if you're pushing on this pretty good, like I am right here, and your thumb's not going through it, I can just about assure you my fabric tester's not going to go through it either. Uh -huh. But we'll, we'll punch test it for you just to give you peace of mind, just so you know. When I first got this thing, it was uh, owned by... Um, a flight club mm -hmm. they had all kinds of stuff on it i want it to be basic i i all i wanted was an engine and some wings to be light mm -hmm. i actually lost some weight myself just so i can <laughs> perform in it a little better man that sunshine feels good it was blowing and snowing when we left up oh. there yeah just open that gate there Like this is something that I wasn't sure if this is something that I should replace once it gets wore down like that, or doesn't that matter? With this? Yeah. No. And then what about like the, how the, big that's wallowed out? The hole being wallowed out, I would worry about. Yeah, this is something that I don't think many people noticed on the videos, but I bent that thing. How did that happen? Um, the reason it, bent right here where it did there's an inner sleeve that goes from here to here oh uh, okay that's what that rivet holds in place pull this trike out go through some stuff on it what needs to and does not need to be replaced one of the main reasons why they originally hung these engines in the center of the YouTube tube the way they did it puts the center of gravity in a really good spot mm -hmm. it's almost right on the seat already it's when you put those Tundra tires on there, it's going to want to sit on the nose even when you're not in it. Oh, yeah? If, yeah, if you pick the tail up, it'll stay, oh, which is normal. nice. What we look at on these mainly, and these pulleys are not in that bad of shape, but I would say in the next 20 to 30 hours, you're going to want to take both of these off and find a place that does anodizing and get them re-hard coated. Oh, yeah? But once this hard coat wears off, the aluminum is smooth underneath and that's why it starts slipping okay yeah because i do have some belt slipping well, um, once you get to that point where you got a, a lot of aluminum exposed it doesn't matter how tight you put those belts so this thing does exactly what i needed to do it's super slow i can get into the farm that's i mean i am beating the crap out of it but yeah, I how long did you strip because it looks tiny as shit on your maybe wheels. 150 feet yeah Got a lot of confidence, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, everybody has an opinion, you know. Well, you're still here. Yeah. On this side, the green line. You want to be good at it. <laughs> I like that. Taking off isn't the issue. It's the landing. That's what a lot of people don't understand. You can take off in 30 feet, 40 feet, you mm -hmm. know, on a good day. It's landing. That's what takes a little bit more space. I don't even use brakes. <laughs> yeah. Flintstone, isn't it? Yep. That's, what, that's without an understanding. Like, that's what Morning, Cobb. Like, uh, like... The ones that ain't got brakes. You just put it down and... After you slow down a little bit, they're under the impression that if people put videos out there of you doing stuff in this that's not 
necessarily a good idea. You're going to give other people to put the thought in their head that, oh, he's doing it. Well, I can too. Yeah, well, which is... Obviously, you've been flying this thing enough that you've gotten comfortable enough with it where you're okay doing that kind of stuff. Somebody who, even high-time GA pilots, I mean, I've taken people that have had thousands of hours, you know, in uh, Cessnas and different things like that, and they get in one of these things, and they can't control it. Mm. They just don't, they don't understand the whole concept of energy management, the way that, that the discipline that's required to fly something like this. It's different. Yeah. You know, trying to make every one of your turns with the ailerons is not... That's not what it is. No. It's a rudder dominant plane, period. So what's the plan? Replace damn near the trike. So to change those belts, I'm going to have to cut this bolt off. You think that axle should be replaced? Most definitely. Yeah. I just got to stop being so hard on it. No, no. <laughs> I'm not being as hard on this thing as you think. Oh, yeah? Oh, man. This is not loose. I have people show up over here with it. I mean, it looks like it went through a par smasher. Just <laughs> it wrapped the strap together. It's got rebar going through the axle to hold the part oh, yeah. snapped off. But it did. So I had a one of the guys that uh, has an F-23 on his, and he pissed a lot of people off. Well, at some point, somebody put turpentine in his fuel tank, and he didn't realize it. So he took off, and at about 100 feet, at a real high angle of attack, the engine put on it. He fell straight down and he hit the ground so damn hard it broke the root tooth in half right there. What? I mean, it just broke it clean, it clean in half. It broke that. The pedals were up into the fuel tank. And I said, How long ago did this happen? Well, last week. I said, You up and walking around? I said, Yeah, all I did was lose a shoe. What? I thought he broke an ankle or something. No, that, that was a different guy. 